because I don't think people's homes or person place is not the place for some of this stuff. Man. People want to get mad, get mad. Take in their animal. Wakatas need a proper fencing. Yeah. So I came out to ask you a question. Oh, I don't care. I'm not like other YouTubers, lawnmowers and plants don't bother me. So why do you not rehome your animals that you adopt? Well, some people are gone, basically. And besides, they're mine forever. I take care of them. And then if there's something that we get overabundance of, I'll find a place to take them where I feel comfortable. Taking them, and it's my responsibility to make sure that I'm not going to keep it in my order or whatever you call it, place, my sanctuary. I'm going to find a place that I think that I can take care of it. Just because I don't think people's homes or person place is not the place for some of this stuff. And people want to get mad, get mad. Go away. <laughs> my, it's what I want to do. It's not what people want no more. Alright, well you heard it from Ken. He doesn't uh, rehome animals because people are stupid. I don't think he really meant that, but what he means is some people don't do research. Some people don't realize the care and need. What do you think about rehoming fees? Rescues that charge people to take in their animal and then charge someone to rehome it to them. Profit in I mean, that's my theory, but that's why I'm asking you. But there's no difference. I mean, does it bother you? I don't care what anybody does as long as they leave me alone from now on. Basically. We also don't charge people to take in their animals because we build these awesome groups of, uh, of animals and we care for more than one very easily. For instance, there's a dozen African helmeted turtles in this enclosure. So why would we want to charge somebody to take in their animal? And why would we want to have to find an individual for each one of these turtles? and trust that person to take the care of the animal for the rest of its life. Like that would be one dozen people we would have to uh, receive applications for. And um, well, I mean, we could charge 20, 50, $100 per animal. Oh look, the Asian box turtle is out. That's a rare sight. Usually she's up underneath her fern. You have to wonder why. Might be nesting, not, not nesting, but looking for a new place to go to sleep. But anyways, why would we want to charge somebody extra money to take in their animal when we have this perfect uh, greenhouse and it doesn't matter? It doesn't matter if we take in one or ten. Same care. Every pond has fish. Soft shell turtle.
Another example is not every animal we take in, we will sell the offspring. This entire group of box turtles is for conservation only. Um, you can see my head there. You can see Sparky there, Three Toad there. Usually Betsy is under here. Look, oh, she's so predictable. Look, there's Betsy. So we care for this entire group of box turtles and none will ever be sold. Ever. 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 Except for one supporter we told uh, that we would allow her to have a box turtle to raise and then she could just give it back to us if she ever wanted to. But there's one person we did talk to about letting her raise a box turtle offspring of ours, like when we first was beginning. But other than that, this entire group, none will be sold. Ever. Conservation cannot be done without captive breeding programs. Oh, that's so cute. Do it, Sparky. You can do it. I think that one thing that is always on my mind is that the people who want to give us negative reviews, like, if you can do better, then do it. I mean, the world is big enough and needs more people like us. Oh, hey, fine. Do good work and, and rehome all the animals. That's great if that's what you want to do, but do it. Don't just talk about it. At least we're doing something. The strange fact is there's enough animals out there to adopt. There's plenty of, you know, families that need help replacing their, or rehoming their exotics. So the world is big enough for, for all of us. You don't have to hate on me because I run my rescue one way and you run your re rescue another way. Or actually, you probably don't even run a rescue. But, um, you know, I wish that every one of us would take responsibility with the environment and we would all build a natural nice enclosure for exotic animals. We would pick a species and we would uh, house both male and females and we would copulate and propagate with that species and and then we would have insurance col colonies and if we all did this and we all made sure that the enclosures were proper and perfect then the world would be such a better place. Hi, buddy. I do not have a treat. No, I don't have a treat. He's a good boy. No treat. He's a good boy. See, we're a forever home, and so Turbo and Tank and everybody, they know us. They don't have to meet a new owner ever again. We're going to be their owner forever. I mean, how can you not want that? How can you want not want a creature to recognize the last person that they'll ever kind of have to worry about who's going to feed them or who's going to give them water? It seems like a forever home is perfect idea to me. We're not out to collect animals either, to give you an example. We have to keep these males separate. I mean, we're not breeding them. We have. Uh, over 30 males that we'll never ever be able to breed with because well you're never going to get females that many females anyways but even if we did I mean these males will live alone uh, unless they work in with a friend but um yeah we house way more animals than we're going to ever breed with male tortoises is just one specific um, species, you know, that we kind of specialize in, but we, 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 we house lots of animals that will never, ever, ever breed and never ever have to find another home. Uh, 
Our main reason we don't ask for an adoption fee is that people that we meet are already going through um, issues. Loss of life, limbs, we don't joke about this stuff, so what are you going to do? Um, I can I'll just use this first pond as an example. In this pond, there are turtles. Oh, they're not going to come out. Let's get some food. In this pond, we have aquatic turtles that come from people with long, long stories. Uh, one story, there's a woman who has got amnesia, cannot remember to feed and take care of her turtle. She doesn't remember her turtle on some days, so it's here forever. This little squirt right there is the turtle, no, this little squirt right there is the turtle that was brought to us with hypovitaminosis uh, A. So she's going to need to live in captivity forever and have special diet and special care. Cory is this one right here. This medium one is coming out of the water. His owner went into the army. Uh, there's one of the Michelangelo's or Donatello's or Leonardo's and basically that family, he just had a family who grew and um, brought, they're one of our first, he's one of our first adoptions actually. Um, a turtle in this pond and a turtle in this pond are adopted because mother and son had a liver transplant in the same, a liver transplant in the same week and um, they couldn't come in contact with the turtles anymore during their healing. And so we have them here forever. Yes, to myself, again. I'm telling people some of the stories about these animals, like some of them are sad stories. O and G's mom. O and G's mom had a baby. And, um, well, they're here. We have a lot of Florida species that are breeding just for conservation. The loggerhead musk turtle right there. There's the mate to it. Come from separate adoptions. They happen to have been wild caught here in Florida, but instead of just um, not doing anything with them, we're populating the same with the three. Striped mud turtles. Families just grew. Nothing financial, nothing life threatening that made these guys come here, but still, the families grew and um, instead of selling their pets, they brought them here and they brought them here because they knew they would have a chance to create offspring for, offspring for conservation. Just the opposite, these turtles here are turtles Ken and I purchased. This is one of the species we want to breed. There's hardly anybody doing it in the country, and um, even though Blake's Exotic Animal Ranch is doing it, and maybe other people are, I'm not really sure, but um, congrats to Blake. But the honest truth is we purchased these, we didn't adopt them. So what, does that make us less of a rescue because we have purchased a few species of animals? It's not animal hoarding, it's not animal collecting. These are species that need to be bred in captivity. This is, I want to say Leonard, but maybe the head is yellow. Gosh, but anyways, so redfoots. Redfoots is something we do breed, and they are um, taking way less than, uh, they, no, this is turdy. Turdy, you can't even see you because your spots aren't white anymore, but you know it's turdy because she's got like orange on her head. No, turdy. Oh, it's Leonard. I don't see the butt. It's Leonard because the paint is still on the butt. <laughs>
Okay, so Leonard. Okay, so anyway, so the Redfoots are um, being farm raised in Brazil and they don't no longer have to uh, wild catch them, which is a positive. So we're not breeding these for, uh, for conservation necessarily, but the thought of not having to pack tortoises up in Brazil and shipping them to America to supply the pet trade is a very good thing. Plus these make wonderful pets. I mean, they don't get very large. They do well in Florida. There's no reason a person cannot experience time with tortoise when it comes to these guys. They are just the cutest. This is a male, of course. Leonard's a female, of course, even though she's called Leonard. Yeah, we breed redfoot tortoises. Sue us. Oh, and let me just get on to that subject while we're joined by a threesome. Since I'm on the subject of redfoots, these guys lay four, five, or six eggs. Out of the four, five, or six eggs, you know, two or three hatch. Maybe you get all, but we have never got all, so a few hatch a few times a year. So you're talking about high level of care, high quality of diet, in order to get six, seven, eight babies per year from a female? Um, just doesn't make sense to think that we're a breeding facility only. It's a fact that turtles are much healthier when they breed. I mean, they're gonna lay eggs regardless of meeting a male. And the eggs get egg bound. I mean, this is just science talking. This is not me. I'm not a, I'm not a science book, but this is truth. They get egg bound or they just lay infertile eggs regardless. So there's no hurting. It's not like we're breeding dogs and lions and bears and horses, but it's okay to breed a horse. That's kind of crazy, isn't it? And if we talk about the African spur thigh, What's the difference between an African spur thigh and a boro goat? This has been Ken's question since the beginning. A boro goat comes from Africa. Salcadas come from Africa. Boro goats get 150 pounds. Salcadas get 150 pounds. Boro goats need a fence, proper fencing. Salcadas need a proper fencing. Boro goats need a barn. Salcadas need a barn. The care, the food, the diet, everything is the same with a boro goat. Yet you get agriculture exemption and you're qualified as a farmer if you raise boro goats. But if you raise salcada tortoises, you're the worst human being in the world. It doesn't make sense to me. This is a perfect example of Lumpy here. I mean, he's doing so much better, but he definitely had extreme pyramiding. And he's one of the brothers, so it allows you to, to notice that uh, all tortoises grow differently. Isn't that kind of radical? Super mean tortoise, too. One reason we don't want to rehome. At least we can handle all of this. Look at this MBD. He has a little sunking here, so that's a sign of he had MBD at one time. And um, through the proper diet, he's already rounding out, growing really, really strong as well. Basically, if you trust somebody, you want to give them their stuff, you do what you want, give it to them. If not, then keep it. Do what you're supposed to do with it. And if not, then I don't know what to tell you. Um, no, just every time somebody gives us a bad review, it makes us want to do better. So I go out and pick something up or make it better or, or make things. It doesn't bother us no more. Hold something. It's basically not for me. It's just from supporters from this place. So, I mean, all it's going to do is get better around here. Like I say, everything's getting fixed up. Everything's looking way better. Poopsie, no! Alright, you heard it here from Ken and Poopsie. 
Uh, the reason we don't rehome is because it's hard to find the right home for these kind of animals and that we are able to maintain their health care for the rest of their life because we have protocols in place. And um, we don't accept uh, adoption fees because people are facing life-changing events and having financial problems as it is. And uh, well, on the next video, we're gonna talk about why we don't need volunteers. So until then, you guys have the best day. When it comes to my point of view and people's reviews, don't make me mad no more. You can basically take your review and stick it where the bleep don't shine from now on. Um, if you don't got nothing nice to say, you shouldn't say anything at all, I guess. That's what everybody's starting to tell me. So, 